Welcome back to Wall Street Week. In the days following Donald Trump's victory, the market's reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. But our next guest seems to think that it won't last. Let's welcome back former budget director under President Ronald Reagan, David Stockman. David, yeah. when you joined us about a month ago, right. you sort of warned viewers to go to cash. You thought the markets would be very volatile. Obviously, we've had this, uh, this, this Trump bump. Right. But you're very concerned now, um, despite what Mario was just talking about, the sort of growth acceleration. Your main concern right now is what's going to happen in terms of the deficit. Yeah, we have to be uh, focused now on the morning after, not the giddiness of the two days after. Two things have happened this week that are just uh, shocking, like political, uh, economic, and uh, uh, financial earth you know, has uh, gone out of its uh, orbit, I think. Now, one was the asteroid that hit Tuesday night. I mean, that hit Washington, D.C., the ruling establishment, like nothing we've ever had, at did least it, in 100 years. Did it surprise years. you? I know you voted for Mr. Yeah. Trump because you said so last Yeah, time. I was one of the 60 million rubes who said, enough of this, it's got to change in a big way. We won an outsider. Were the, you surprised? Uh, I was uh, hoping in the last week that it would get there. I laid out two days before the election a route to 270. It pretty much happened. What shocked me was Wisconsin. I didn't think that was going to happen, but I think it was uh, kind of a weather vane of what's going on in the country. What I'm saying, though, is... Yeah, let's go back to the deficit. Why, if the growth that is forecast now happens and, and we start to actually pay off the deficit after we grow it. What's wrong with that? Because uh, <laughs> there is $20 trillion ticking time bomb called the debt ceiling right in front of us. Uh, that will happen in March. Uh, the new Trump administration is going to inherit that mess. I call it a stink bomb left uh, from last October when they made that deal, Boehner and uh, Obama, right. uh, for the new president. And it's going to consume the entire first 100 days trying to get that thing through. The Republicans are not going to want to vote for a $20 trillion debt ceiling. He's going to have to go to Democrats. When you go to Democrats, they say no, no on Obamacare, no on some of the big regulations that you want to lift, no on a big tax cut for the wealthy. Uh, we'll argue with you on the tax cut for corporations and how we're going to do it. So my point is the market was giddy on the view that uh, Washington is coming to the rescue with a huge new fiscal stimulus and infrastructure and all that. That is dead wrong. The news flash is that Washington is out of business. The imperial city is in smoking ruins. It will not function. It will be acrimony, confrontation, brinksmanship. So if you were advising And well, if I could just finish, yes, so one, one point, that means we'll hit the next recession with nothing to break the fall. The okay, Fed's so out of dry powder, and Washington will be paralyzed. Everybody, everybody's feeling pretty good, and I, I think oh, David right. is, is sort of is breaking us down. That's why he's, he's the gloom and doom guy. Yeah, but but, but Anthony, even, Anthony, part of this election... Even the, even the beard looks like he's <laughs> living in the bomb Anthony, shelter. Anthony, Anthony, part of this election message yeah. was that Mr. Trump, President-elect Trump now, knows how to negotiate and do deals. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't he going to be able to go to the Congress and, 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 and deal in the way well, that hasn't been done? Listen, I'm, I'm optimistic because in the transition meetings that I've been in and, and the conversations mm -hmm. I've had with him post-election, he is really looking to do what's right. He's not really focused on left or right. And I think that's a good philosophy for right now in our country. But my question to you is, what, what would you give him? What kind of advice would you give Mr. Trump? Uh, I, the advice I would give him is that he cannot uh, raise, uh, rebuild defense, build a wall, enforce the borders, spend more on veterans, uh, have a massive tax cut, have a huge infrastructure program, and not touch Social Security or Medicare or any of the other entitlements. That is fit Reagan fiscal follies on steroids, and we could do it then because we only had a one trillion national debt. We got a 20 trillion debt now, and we got 10 trillion more built in. In other words, before one Trump program is enacted, there's another 10 trillion of red ink coming from what's already there. Uh, and they, you, you, you can't add four or five uh, let, let, let's, let's walk away from the deficits for yeah. a second in the budget. Yeah. Is the, the growth projections out there realistic? Will there be the kind of uh, GDP growth with the tax cuts and, and the changes that he's uh, suggesting? That's the skunk in the woodpile. The growth in the baseline is totally unrealistic, the CBO baseline. Uh, it's rosy scenario. 
So if you did everything Trump wants to do and it works as well as the supply siders say, you'll be lucky to get what's already assumed. That's the point. There's no extra revenue. There's no deficit reduction. If you do everything he wants to do, you have to do that basically to reclaim. And here's why. The CBO baseline assumes we're going to go for 208 months without a recession. It's never happened in human history. Why did you, why did you vote for him? I voted for him because I'm totally fed up with the Fed. I think the national debt is a ticking time bomb. Uh, I at least think that he's re realistic somewhat about our interventionist war-oriented foreign policy. He was smart enough to say I'll negotiate with Putin and not you know, argue that he's some kind of latter-day Hitler. So there, there were uh, basically items in his uh, David, uh, list. You, that you, mentioned the, you mentioned the Fed today. You mentioned the Fed last time you were on. Um, whether he keeps Janet Yellen through her term, uh, there'll be probably a new head of the Fed. Who should be the head of the Fed? Uh, well, I mean, if you wanted someone who really knows what they're doing, it should be Jim Grant. Jim Grant is a student of central banking from day one, and he understands that we don't need price controls on money and debt in the stock market. We need price discovery. We need to let people, uh, hundreds of oh. uh, millions of people who are out there in the market, determine what the interest rate is, what the money market rate is, and, and so forth. And he's also for a stable, fair currency as well. I mean, yeah. so our, some of our viewers may not know who Jim is, but he's a... The legendary uh, newsletter grant interest rate of Yeah, I mean, he's been studying this for a long time. But the point is, we need to get the Keynesians out of there. I think they made a mistake this week when they said, well, we're going to replace Janet Yellen and Fisher, but we'll let them run their term. A huge mistake. Big, big mistakes will be made in 2017 unless they get those two Keynesian money printers out of there, and they can. All they have to do is say, I have no confidence in, in you. You've made a mess out of this. This bubble is going to crash. Uh, I would uh, like you to do the decent thing and resign. Okay? That's simple. But then that would uh, wake up Wall Street to the fact that the days of the Fed uh, basically uh, keeping you uh, in uh, ever rising uh, prices are over, uh, that we're in a totally new ballgame. So the, the thing I want to summarize with is that we're entering a chaotic period of non-governance, of a central bank that can't function anymore that's out of dry powder. There's nothing to rescue this economy. We're going to have a recession. I follow the IRS, not the BLS. The IRS tells me how much money they're collecting, and it's been flat and actually negative for the last four or five months, even on payroll taxes. And that means the economy is long in the tooth. It's slipping into a recession. When the confrontation over the debt ceiling happens, when the disappointment over no traction on the Trump stimulus happens, we'll be in recession. I will say in six months, the deficit will explode to over a trillion dollars annually. They're not going to be in a position to do all these huge things. Now, I don't blame Donald Trump. He is inheriting a mess, a rigged system that is far worse than anything even he imagined, and uh, he was colorful about what he said. All right, well, I can't leave it on that because it was a great victory, and we did call it here on Wall Street Week last week, so congratulations. Well, congratulations to you. To you. you stood and, there through the whole and, thing. And, and, David, uh, and, and Thank you, this. and we're looking forward to getting your help and advice. Uh, so thank you for joining us.